Good morning, Joy here. It's a beautiful sunny day and I woke up feeling a little creative even though I didn't get a lot of sleep. So we're trying a new project and it's watercolor which is kind of what I'm I'm addicted to right now. Um, and while I was wandering around Pinterest the other day I saw an absolutely beautiful painting. I will see whether or not it allows me to copy and save that photo so that I can show you um, on this video at some point what the original looked like because it is absolutely beautiful and if you if I can't the address for that is on Etsy.com and the artist name um, or their their page is called Slavi Art S L A V I and then art all in caps and the work on that page is just vibrant it's gorgeous it's all sorts of different kinds of animals and you can buy them on um, t-shirts and mugs and all sorts of stuff. I love it. Absolutely in love with this artist's work and all the beautiful bright colors that are on it, which of course made me want to try to copy it to see if I could do something like that myself. Obviously it will never look like hers. She's obviously been doing this for quite a long time, but it's things like that that inspire you that make you try to get better and try to learn new things and techniques and looks and things that you might not have thought to try for yourself. So while I am copying another artist's work here to see if I can do it, I would definitely like to give credit for the beauty and the inspiration and the creativity to the person who actually did the original. So go check out Slabby Art on Etsy.com and drool just like I did. Um, now, like I say, I don't know how well this is going to turn out. I've never tried anything like this. But the colors that she used in her paintings is what got me in the first place. And here is kind of the palette I'm working with. Um, not your typical sea turtle color necessarily, but so beautiful and very tropical, bright, vibrant colors, like I said, which is what caught my eye. And so what I've done is I have drawn out, as you can see, the basic shape. And all you can probably see right now, aside from some light pencil marks, is some yellow. And what I've done so far, because it takes a while, is I've, I've gotten out my frisket, ah, sorry, my masking fluid, my frisket, and I have colored in the parts that I would like to remain nice bright white. And that is the area between um, the pattern on the shell and on here and on the head. And that way the really vibrant colors really stand out. I don't see, and I dripped some stuff on there. Apparently my lid is not closed. So now I've gone and dripped on the bottom of the painting. Um, now you also notice, the good thing about frisket is it rubs off, that I have just kind of done random drops here and there. And so I think I want that to give the impression of bubbles. So because there's going to be some drops of color and things in the background, um, I would like to also have some white that stays pure. And so that's why I've done these little drops of frisket everywhere. Yeah, I think I've cleaned up my mess. And so I'm going to uh, do this video hopefully in sections because I have figured out that I can speed up parts of it. So when I get to just doing the entire painting part of it, I am going to speed it up a little bit. I just wanted to give you a little bit of a, a rundown on uh, what started this and what gave me the idea and that artist's beautiful work. And I also wanted to let you know that I've been watching some other videos on YouTube and the artist in question does what he calls very loose watercolors. And this is something I've never seen anyone do before. It may be a thing. I don't know. But uh, this gentleman, and I think his name is Andrew Wieson, I think. And what he's been doing that I've seen is that he's basically just been dropping. And I've still got some blue in that water. That's not good. He's just been dropping random parts of water on the painting before he starts and quite a lot of it really and I think the idea behind that is um, it allows the paint to travel around on its own and so it gives it kind of a more random feeling and I like the way and he's not I haven't seen him doing animals I've seen him mostly doing um, flowers and things still life but because the water is kind of flowing around and the paint is following the water, it really looks kind of cool. So I'm going to try that on this one as well. I have no idea if the original um, artist does anything like this in her painting, but I liked it. 
So I'm going to kind of try two new things at once. I have no idea how that's going to work out for me. It may not. But uh, as I've said before in my, um, my channel trailer, I think that the whole thing is an adventure. It's a journey and it's more about learning new stuff and trying new stuff, which I say over and over those words, than it is about perfection. Um, there is art out there that is perfect, but um, I don't think that's really what art is all about. I really envy the people that have the patience and the skill to do it, but I don't think it's necessary because art is about expression. And everyone's expression is going to be different because everyone's understanding of what's around them or the way they see what's around them is different. So I don't think that perfect comes into it. So having babbled now for, uh, let's see here, five minutes, um, almost six, I'm going to, uh, to pause it so I can give you kind of an idea on, uh, on the video about what I'm using for um, tools and such. And then we will get right into it. And the next section hopefully will be speeded up. So uh, if I have something I need to say, I will stop the video again so that I can give you little bits of information or tips or ideas on why I did something as I go. And then hopefully I could piece it all back together at the end and it turns out being a lovely video. So I hope you enjoy it.
All right, so that's as long as my patients can stand to wait. So we're gonna take off the frisket and see how it looks. And it's getting close to time for me to go to work, so I will probably have to come back and do the rest of this either tonight when I get home or tomorrow, but I can't leave it like this and head to work. I have to get some of this frisket off so I can see what it looks like. And this is where I found out I had an issue last time with this paint because it started coming off on my finger and then I was smudging it and when I tried to get the frisket off. So hopefully this does not happen this time. I've certainly used a lot less pigment than I did before. And the other thing that hopefully will improve is that this is the first painting I have tried to do with my newer, more expensive watercolor paper. And this watercolor paper is, let's see if I can find, there we go. I've taken the sheet off and taped it down, obviously. But this is the type that I upgraded to. So this is Strathmore watercolor paper, and it is a 140 pound. So it's a cold press and it's fairly thick, and I'm hoping that means that I can do things like the first kit without uh, peeling off the paper that it was attached to. That's what happened last time on my cheap paper. And so far, it is definitely improvement. As you can see, the frisket is pulling off, and I probably now have too much white. How funny is that? So while I was waiting for this to dry, I kind of went back and I watched the first couple bits of video, and I figured out where I went wrong. The first thing that I did incorrectly, that I will have to learn not to do, is I should have put my drops on. I started, I was doing really good, I thought, until I hit the light blue. So I did the dark blue, I did the purple. It all looked pretty good. And then I hit the light blue and I started going off off the reservation. Um, and that's when I started adding background. So I should have just left it as it was and worked on my turtle and then left the rest for later because there were areas where it was leaching out into the water drops that I had put on the page before I started and it, that was looking quite nice. So if I had left it alone, it probably would have been good and I could have gone back yeah. afterwards. And this is the other thing that I decided that I, I need to do differently next time is to not, like I said, splash the drops on the background first because then when I went back and I added the background that I shouldn't have added, as you can see, I've smudged some of the original drops. So I'm gonna have to learn to worry about my background maybe a little later and just deal with my turtle first because he was actually going pretty well just by himself. And that's probably something that is gonna bother me about this painting now is that the, the background takes away from the turtle. I am happy about this frisket thing though. It is nice to be able to just pull it off like this without wrecking my paper. So it probably was worthwhile for me to spend the extra money. Now being cheap, I did wait for it to go on sale. So this pad of paper, and it's like 15 sheets or something, which 
doesn't really go very far if you're just learning and you need to do practice paintings which is why I got the cheap stuff then um, it doesn't last very long but again if you're frustrated because every time you try to do something like this your page gets pulled off by the frisket it's kind of a catch-22 you waste the money on the paper or you uh, have paintings with marred areas and if they do turn out really good and you want to show it off you've got problems with it so I don't know I think this will be worth it for me at this point to, to keep getting the more expensive paper not like I do always end up getting I get it from Michaels they have 40 or 50 or 30 percent coupons almost all the time so I will just make sure that I use my my coupons to get it and that will allay my guilt about spending 20 some dollars on a pad of 15 sheets so the I looked online and the original of course the original painting she's selling on Etsy and um, the cost of that original painting I suppose when you consider the cost of the supplies you can definitely afford to get $26 or whatever for paper because I think she was asking over a thousand euros no lira whatever it's the L shape it might be lira anyways for the paint the original painting of this that's a lot of money for a painting obviously when you're that talented and the painting is that beautiful that works okay so we've got our outline and I'm just trying to get these little spots off without as I said smudging it with my finger because there is a little bit of paint coming off on my fingers but not anywhere near like it was last time so I can say there is some improvement in my frisket issues and paint issues it was probably my own fault I probably was just because it's watercolor and sometimes I put things on and it's quite see-through like the light blue when I put it on really didn't show up well at all and I thought oh shoot I should have added more pigment to that but when it dries it gives a nice color so perhaps I'm just not patient enough to wait and see what it looks like after it dries I'm just gonna run my finger over and see if I'm missing any bits of frisket you can usually feel it because the latex feels a little different than the paint I think that's it. All right, so here is our our white bits, our separators. And as I said, it turned out the way I thought. I mean, this part looks great. Um, these, I've got too much white for the area, so I'm probably going to go back in and make some of these areas larger. This was meant to be the eyeball, and I kind of painted right over it and then forgot that it was the eyeball. So I'm going to have to do something to make that stand out, this area here, which is kind of a elongated triangle shape so there's too much white on the head I'm gonna have to fix that and I'm gonna work on the edges I'm gonna make sure the edges look a little nicer and maybe something along here to make it stand out also something along the bottom edge of the shell because this is under shell here so I'm going to have to do something along the edge of that bottom shell and I'll probably use my my paintbrush I was just telling you about where to go my itty bitty little pointy guy here to uh, touch that up with some other colors but like I said I have to work today so I'm gonna have to set this aside for later and get back to it so a recap what we've learned is splash our dots on after and leave the background alone <laughs> or at least I mean sometimes having a nice background like this works but I got a little carried away and it's too too splotchy too many different colors everywhere um, so it might have been better for me if I was going to have a background to do a wash of the one color and then add in bits of the, the accent colors so that they would spread from those points and it would look a little more organic. Because right now there's definitely um, too many brush strokes, too many, too many lines. So I will probably try this again because I am having fun with it. And the next time I do, I will make some changes to what I've done so far. So I will turn this off for now and go to work. And when I come back, we will see if we can't make it a little bit nicer with some touch-up work. Toodles till then.
Hello there, we're back. So, I came home last night and I checked this out to see how it looked when it was dry. And I decided on a couple things. The first thing I decided, besides the fact I decided yesterday that I want to make these areas larger so there's less white, I also decided that because it looks so blotchy here and there where there's lines, and I'm not overly fond of that, I decided what I'm going to try and do is soften some of these lines. And so that's what I'm going to do first, because the second part requires the page to be dry. And the second part is I decided that because I want to make a nice crisp outline of the turtle from the background, I'm going to use my pens. Um, now these pens are great. Um, these are actually India ink. And the difference is India ink can get wet. So I could have drawn out the turtle with the black pens before I started and used that as an outline as opposed to the pencil. Um, it, it is waterproof. Now I have accidentally used the wrong pen before, which is why I try not to do it now. Um, and it, I don't know if I have that painting nearby. I probably don't, but it, um, it streaks when you put the water on it. So you don't want to use the wrong type of pen. You definitely need a waterproof pen. And this one is uh, Faber-Castell. I don't know if it's Faber or Faber-Castell. There is small, fine, medium, and bold in there. I will probably only use a fine and a medium kind of a thing. Um, I'm not gonna get too complicated, but once I get the background to where I want it and I get this part to where I want it, I'm gonna go back in and I'm just gonna um, sharpen up the edge with the nice black lines and then I think I can make his eye look a little better that way and obviously I can sign the sign the painting so that's the plan this is where we're at right now um, I've got two-thirds of this video all uploaded onto YouTube so hopefully probably tomorrow is when I will end up with the whole thing ready to go it takes a little while for it to load and it takes a little while for it to process so um, it always takes me much longer than I would prefer but in the meantime, we're going to start out, and I'm just going to use my big Chinese brush that I used for most of the painting. And I'm just going to add little bits of water and just rub the edges of some of the worst lines. Um, and unfortunately, because I did, I'm not going to say screw up, but I didn't really think through, and I put these spray dots on before I decided I was completely finished. So I have to be kind of careful that I don't ruin my little spots. And see, this kind of edge I don't mind because this looks like it seeped a little. It's a little bit uh, a little bit rougher, a little bit less linear. It's got a soft edge. So that part I'm okay with. That that to me is just organic looking. That's, that's okay. Um, when doing this, by the way, if you're going from a green to a pink, you have to make sure and clean off your brush because it will carry over some of that paint color from one to the other. But you can actually just kind of go in and if you see, once it's wet again, one of the beauties again of, of better paper, once it's wet again, these colors will not necessarily bleed, but they'll soften the edge because the paint will, will reactivate a certain amount. And so then it will just kind of flow a little bit into each other. It's not a real bleed like it is when it's wet, but it does at least soften a little bit of the edge. I'm just gonna wash that off before I get to the pinky bit in case I carry some blue. I'm not sure how well you're gonna be able to see this or not, but I'm just going over the very edge and just lightly rubbing the part that I want to soften. I don't wanna to get too close to my, my fin. And I'm quite happy with the way the fin happened. They tend to be um, kind of fluted. There's little little rough edges on it. And it did turn out that way, so that's good. I like that. So if you can tell which parts of this are now a little softer than they were before, then it's working. And I really should have, I think, just used fewer colors or um, at the time when it, if you were watching the other part of the video 
what I did is I decided that it was really wet and I wanted it to have more texture. So I went in with my cloth and I dabbed. And that was probably part of why it turned out like this. I took away a lot of the water and it bled less than it would have if I'd let that water stay there. Because at that point then, when I added the other colors, they would have merged somewhat. But because I was thinking to myself, I want some texture, and then afterwards I thought, well, I still don't like it. I'm just going to add more color. And the two things didn't really go well together. So that's kind of why I think I ended up with this blotchy looking background that I'm really just not satisfied with. But if I can get it to soften, then maybe I'll be all right. It's not a horrible thing. It's never a horrible thing. It's just a learning experience, right? Because if I had either left no background or done it wet in wet a little more, it would have a totally different look than this. Or probably even if I just used less colors. It's the... Uh, massive number of colored areas probably that and I looked I actually went back when I was doing the editing on the video I looked at the original oil paint or not oil watercolor painting um that Slavika did and the dots in her background do look like they have bled so when I did the beginning and I added the water to the background to the canvas before the paper before I started Perhaps I wasn't so far off. So maybe, uh, I'm thinking maybe what she did is to do the, the turtle itself. The turtle doesn't seem to bleed all that much into the background. Excuse me for sniffing with my perpetual cold. Um, so maybe she did the turtle first is my thought and then she wet the background so that when she splashed it with the paint drops, some of them seem to bleed more than others. Some of them have a very soft edge and some of them don't. So perhaps that's kind of part of the trick that she was using as well. And I like that idea because that means maybe I just stumbled on something that I should have been doing. It's kind of cool when that happens. So I think this is working a little bit. I don't have to use a lot of water. I just kind of have to dip my brush in it. The one thing that might happen if you do add too much water is that you'll get the, um, what do you call it, cauliflower effect. Which is like the, the water pushes, they call it pushing, the water will force the pigment around it away from where the water's added and then you get this little, this little um, hard edge that's very, looks like cauliflower, very flowery or curly. It's not really a bad look. It looks kind of cool in some cases. It's almost the same kind of look you get when you put chunks of salt on your wet paint and it pushes the uh, liquid away from it and leaves these little white areas with a hard edge. So it's kind of the same thing, I guess. doing with this weird purple. I guess I was hoping it would bleed a little bit and it would just be kind of a random shape, but it did not. And so it is a very hard random shape. It is not at all what I was aiming for, so I'm just gonna soften all this area in between all these colors and hope that now that they're wet, they will bleed into each other just enough to make it look less unnatural. Sometimes it turns out the one picture that I did that I'm really quite happy with um, was an anchor. Chris is a sailor, so I like to do things that have sailing themes. Um, in case it does turn out, then he might actually appreciate it. And so I did an anchor because, I, again, I saw a picture on Pinterest and I thought, oh, that's lovely. I'll try that. And I uh, 
I had a lot of fiddle farting going on. I had to go back in several times and say, okay, well, I don't like this part. I'll touch this up and I'll change this and I'll add this color. And the fact that you have to do that doesn't make it a bad painting or, you know, uh, a problem or an error because it's one of the favorite ones I've done so far. It did turn out really well and it just took a little bit of trial and error to get it so that it's, I'm happy with it. I wasn't happy with the very first incarnation, if you want to call it that, of how it turned out. But I did manage to take it from being something I wasn't happy with to being one of my favorites. So like I say, it's not always a bad thing to have to go back in and make a change. This part here is not softening up as much as I would have liked. But I think on the whole, as you can see up here where we just did this, it is softening and spreading. And there was a little cauliflower effect going on there. But again, I don't think that's a bad thing. I kind of like that effect because at least it looks more organic. At least it's got some flow and curl and softness to it as opposed to what I did say here where it looks like brush strokes. If it were something that was an animal with fur and it had brush strokes, okay, that would make sense, but uh, I don't know what I was thinking. I'm putting that there like that. So, huh. This guy isn't really moving around at all on me. But I'm not sure I'm happy about that. So we're gonna add some more water. And I try not to add water just on the part that I'm annoyed with because otherwise it's just going to flow into the same area that it was in in the first place. And that doesn't change anything, so it's not really doing what I want it to unless it changes the whole look of it. So this isn't perfect either, but I am kind of starting to like the background a little better than it was. It is, at the very least, softening a little. I don't think I've managed to ruin too many of my dots. Although that dot is not really a dot, that's kind of more of a splash, so we're just going to not worry about him. We're going to let him do whatever. Right, so we're not gonna be able to tell how exactly this works or how well it works until all of this dries again because as long as there's water on the paper oh by the way when I was doing this with my cheaper paper on a few of my things it actually did <coughs> rub off some of the very top surface of the page so this is another reason, I guess, why it's good for me to have the slightly more expensive paper. I keep trying to sell myself on this more expensive paper because I am cheap just by nature. What was I doing? I was just had one I wanted to fix and now I can't remember where it was. Maybe it was that one. So anyway, so you can rub away at the page a little bit. Um, whenever I tried to lift something as well, it... Uh, it took some of the surface page away with it. Oh, that's what I was saying. As long as there's some liquid on the paper, the paint and the pigment is going to keep moving around a little bit. So what it looks like right now is not necessarily what it looks like when it's going to dry. So we will have to see when it's a little drier what it actually looks like. I apologize for the fact that my dog is whining in the background. He wants outside every two minutes and back inside every one minute. So it's, it's a little annoying and I'm ignoring him because he's already been out today many times yeah he's vocal fellow though he's old and he's vocal and he's a little spoiled so he's used to getting his way and so we will probably have to hear him a little bit longer before he gives up so I'm just going to try my next little correction I want to fix these little areas and I used up all of my light pink so I'm just mixing some extra light pink and then I'm going to take my itty bitty little brush that I like and I'm just going to take, it's mostly pinks in there, pinks and some purples and a bit of blue, 
So I don't know how this is going to work. Because the rest of the page is dry, it's a little more controllable, but it's also not going to have a soft edge. It's going to have a hard edge. But I guess because I was putting a hard edge on these anyways with the uh, frisket, it's probably not that bad. And I think what I'll do is I will build the shape I want first, and then I might touch in other colors so that it looks like the rest of the painting does, where it's a little bit more blended. Mm -hmm. And all I want to do is spread these out a little so that there's a lot less white and a lot more colored spots. If that makes any sense. And I'm kind of guessing at which blue this happened to be. So it may not be right. However, I'm hoping that since it's just blending, hopefully anyways, that that's okay, that it's gonna work out. We shall see when it's finished if it looks, or if it's very obvious that I've changed this, it might be. And I have to remember again, that that is the eyeball. Because I got carried away when I was doing this and I just kind of painted blue right over it when I was doing everything else and uh, that's not what I had intended. At all. But that's kind of what I did. So I'm going to try not to do that again. And while these are wet, I'm just gonna drop in a little bit of the other color because I don't want it to be all just blocks of color. I want it to match what's going on in the rest of it. So I want to drop some blue into the pinks. Hopefully when that moves around, it helps disguise the, the hard line where I've added the new stuff. We shall see. That one should have some light pink, I think, because that looks like what was there originally. So we'll put some of the light pink in there. Hope for the best. It's a learning experience, right? It's a learning experience. Poor old guy, he's just having a rough time. He's got an ear infection going on and Whenever he's not happy, he tends to pace and he can't decide what he wants. So he goes inside, he goes outside, he drinks himself silly, he throws up, and then he goes back inside, and then he goes back outside, and he paces the whole house whining. And I feel sorry for him, because he's unhappy. But I can only do so much. And then I get frustrated because he makes me go in and out the door all day. All right, so that's better. I think I want the really dark blue for his eyeball, and I think I'm going to go around his eyeball quite heavily in black, so I'm going to make it nice and big so it stands out. Like so. I want lots of nice dark color. No idea what shape this eyeball should be. I just remember that it was an elongated triangle. So hopefully I can, like I said, touch it up with the black pen afterwards to get it the way we want it. And I'm also going to touch this up because this is his, his, her, whatever, snout area. And I probably should have, I'm gonna try and lift out a little bit here because I think there should have been a nostril that I did not think to leave. So I'm just gonna see if I can't lighten an area to make it look like there's some sort of nostril there. And then should be able to kind of 
fixed the yeah, that was wet so it bled back into it that was brilliant so I need to be a little more patient and let this lightened area dry a little before I try to make a firm outline so I will go back to what I was doing and I will try to fix some of these areas. My purple is not stirred well enough, I guess. I do think it's looking a little better now that it's not quite as much white in this area as it was. So that's an improvement. It was just way too much white. I'm not really the best person for this very delicate things. Well, I'm surprised that so far I haven't managed to accidentally put two of these things together and I have probably just jinxed myself by saying that but if I manage not to I'm going to be very pleased with myself pat myself on the back because that'll be a first Too much pink down here. Ooh, I almost did it right there. All right, so how does that look? Does that look better? Somewhere along here, I need to make sure that this looks like nice, well shaded neck area. So I'm just going to put that there and then I'm going to try and soften the edge so it bleeds a little and hope that that makes it a little bit nicer than it was. And also here on the kind of like a shoulder area in the original, it was quite well defined, this area. So I'm going to try and do the same thing. I'm going to add some nice dark purple. And then I'm going to soften the edge and hope that it bleeds out into the rest a little so that it's not quite a hard line. And again, I think the same thing should happen here. Hopefully that nostril is dry enough. This doesn't mess it up because there was a fairly dark area because this obviously is where the turtle's mouth opens. And I left a white line to remind myself that I did have to make sure that stood out. But I'm not sure if I should leave the white line or not because it's not really like there's a highlight under there. It should be actually a shadow if anything. But I want to make sure, I guess I'm going to use my marker anyways. It shouldn't really matter if it's not standing out as well because it will once I get the marker going. So I want the purple, but I also want to darken the bottom part because it's in shadow. So I'm just going to add some dark blue and see if I can't get that to go where I want it to. We'll see. The other area I have to work on, I think, is here because this is also in shadow. This is the area, this should be the edge of the actual hard top shell. And then there's usually a little set in before the, the bottom shell. So somewhere along there, I need to make that stand out. And because I had it kind of pinky colors, 
think that's what I'll do is I will lay in some darker pink right under that edge. And then shadow it maybe with purple so that it's a definite change in color and tone and stuff from the top. Now I did actually put these colors there when I was painting it the first time around, but they didn't darken as much as I thought they should. And obviously there's no hard edge, which I suppose, I kind of, I keep saying I, I don't want a hard edge, but there are certain areas where I think there kind of should be, simply because otherwise it doesn't show the shape of what it is. So in order to not make that all uniform, I'm just going to drop some of this in here and there and let it do its thing. I have no idea if an undershell has a pattern I need to worry about, but all right. So on the whole, I think there are areas that, that helped and there are areas like this one that I'm still not overly happy with the background. But um, I may actually do something totally unprecedented in my experience, or at least for me, and try this again. I may actually decide to draw out another sea turtle and give them another shot. Not this exact layout, because I've done that. But I think I may try doing a, well, not a full back, but um, so that he's like this. And he has fins coming out both sides. So I may have one that emerges kind of from the bottom corner of the page and does that. Because I think I've learned a little bit about what not to do on the background or what to change and how I do the background. And I want to give that a try and see if it does actually look a lot better that way. So in the meantime, I'm going to uh, give this a second or two to dry. Oh, I have to finish that nostril. I almost forgot. I have to finish that nostril. It seems dry enough that I should be able to. Give that a little bit of definition, like so. I hope. not overly white but there's something there so that's probably good at least there's something there to say that's different from the rest so I'm going to try and leave it alone long enough now to let the mark the paint all dry this area is fairly dry I just fixed that so that won't be dry and this is going to take a minute I have to avoid those areas. I'm going to rinse out my water for a second here, excuse me. I want to make sure I get my paintbrushes clean. And now I have to decide what size I want to use in these pens. And there are certain areas that probably need to be thicker than others. Um, so I'm assuming that because the eyelid on a turtle I think is fairly heavy that I should use the thicker marker. I don't want to go to the full bold. I don't know if you can see how well. Um, but the full bold looks quite wide. It looks almost like a sharpie marker as opposed to a pen. I'm not sure I want to go that far. So I might be using the middle two and I think I'm going to use the medium size for say the outside edge of the shell or at least the bottom shell this part here just I don't think is going to be real hugely delineated I just want a nice little line on the edge and I think I want to do a little something around each um, it's not a shell it's a pattern on the shell but just to make them stand out and the other thing I noticed when I went back and looked at the original is that she had gone in at some point or some in some manner I don't know how she did I don't know if she did 
lines of clear water and then drop the paint in. But there were definite lines coming out on each section, like this. I have no idea how that worked. Maybe she dragged a brush through after it was done. I don't know. Um, but there was some sort of pattern in amongst it. And I can't do that, I don't think, at this point without making it look odd. So on my next turtle, I may see if I can find a way to give that. Because it's true, when you look at turtle shells, there are lines in amongst the pattern. But in the meantime, I can probably do something with the edges. Maybe that's what I should be doing now, actually. I should probably be... Some of these, I wanted them to be a little bit... And that's probably going to be a hard line. So maybe I'll soften that edge, too. See if I can't get it to flow a little. But some of these edges turned out really kind of weird. Partly because, like this one here, the paint didn't flow all the way to the edge of where the frisket was. And so it didn't have a real good... I stuck my hand in the wet paint. It didn't have a real good edge to it, so I'm going to try and touch that up a little bit. Every time I think I'm done, I find something else. And this one here, I'm not sure how I ended up with quite that much white space not what I wanted. And because I want that to be a little less of a dark line, I'm going to try and again drop that in there and then soften the edge and see if I can't get it to flow into the other stuff. I kind of like the way that's actually working. And what other one? This corner down here struck me as being a little odd. I think I had wanted it to do this. I'm not sure how it didn't. However, put a bunch of this in there. I'm going to soften the edge a bit. And then I'm going to drop in some purple, I think. Maybe even a bit of dark blue. I really like this blue. This, I don't know, I'm not sure if this is, I guess it's kind of ultramarine-ish. Whatever it is, I like it. It's nice and rich. And I don't think I got enough of it in here. It did, it did go in, but it kind of spread into other colors. And when it did that, it's kind of diluted. So it's not quite as nice and rich as it is when you put it on by itself. It is a very pretty color. That's why I think I'm going to use it up here. Like so. And I'm going to spread that. Try not to hit my white spot. I had a white spot there. Oops. drop a bit more in. I'm almost out of it. I'm going to have to mix some more if I decide to keep going. But I don't think I should keep going because I'll get carried away again and you never know what happens then. And at some point this has to dry enough for me to do what I'm trying to do. So I think I will try to make this my last adjustment. can't resist a little bit more blue. Just can't. It does tend to fade quite a bit when it gets wet. Okay, so I'm, I'm gonna try I'm gonna try to put this down. I should put my brushes away so I can't do anything else to it. Put them right away. Hide them. 
what I should do, I probably won't do. So now that I've messed with all that, I have to wait for more of that to dry. But I haven't touched this. So I'm going to start there with my markers and see how it goes. So up to this point, I had managed to keep this video fairly short by speeding up parts. And now, of course, I'm babbling through it. So I'm going to uh, pause the video. And then the next section, while I do the marker, I am going to hopefully not talk. And then I can speed that up again because I'm trying to keep the video under an hour. So um, keep watching and we will finish this up and cross our fingers and hope for the best.